Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So, this is going to be a general energy reading. However, this is going to be a reading focused on this latest full moon that we are having on the 23rd of July, which happens to be tomorrow, yeah? Uh, please keep in mind though that this is a general reading, okay? This is not science specific or anything, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. It's a little less timeless than normal because we are talking about a, a specific <clears throat> uh, time period. We're talking about a specific time. We're talking about the full moon here. So take it as it resonates. Um, but also keep in mind that even with the energies of a full moon, you know, it's not cut and dry. The energies are fluid. So you could be dealing with these energies for days to come you could have been dealing with them already okay depending on you know how sensitive you are or what's wh what's going on in your life or what what not whatever all right so just keep that in mind i forgot my lighter hold on a second i want to light some sage okay so we are talking full moon today now um we did talk about this yesterday the, the reason why i'm doing this is because yesterday or last night during happy hour, this is what we talked about. However, I completely spazzed and somehow I ended up deleting the live stream after it was finished. And I absolutely did not even mean to do that. Um, and I, I, I literally, I don't even know how it happened, but it's one of those moments or it's one of those situations where like I had my phone in my hand, I had finished the live stream and I was getting up to go into my kitchen to go get ready for dinner and everything and I hadn't fully like processed or finished or re left the end screen and so I guess the end screen after after finishing a live stream you know where I, I, you guys many of you may not know but like when you do a live stream there is a little there's a screen afterwards that give you a bunch of stats about the live stream and everything like that and I wasn't even finished like Pro reading through that but I wanted to get up and like go in the kitchen and get ready to start making dinner because it was seven o'clock and I was hungry and I wanted to get to bed and this that and the third but in the process of me getting up and going into the kitchen something happened on the phone on my phone and the live stream ended up getting deleted and I was actually really upset about that because it was a really good session um, and a lot of what we talked about last night was in terms of the full moon and you know the heaviness that people are feeling right now the massive collective reset that i feel is coming that is associated with the uh the lion's gate portal uh, in august between the 6th and the 8th of, 8th of august um and so i'm really sorry about that i did not intend for that to happen um, it was a really great discussion. So for those of you that were there, you got a little exclusive situation. But for those of you that unfortunately could not make it, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to delete the live stream. Uh, but that's okay. We're going to make up for it. We're going to use morning coffee today to talk about the energies of the full moon and bring some more messages forward for the collective in terms of this full moon cycle. Yeah. Um, I was going to try and sit here and recap um, Jinx. Oh, she's chasing things. Um, I was going to try and sit here and recap a lot of what we went through, but I, or, or a lot of what was discussed yesterday and or last night in the live stream, but I'm just like, I don't even want to do that. I, at this point, number one, I'm a little frustrated, but number two, um, I'd rather just start all over. So that's what we're going to do. So whatever messages that come through, um, I'm going to try and relate them to last night. If there are some things that come up that are that are relevant, I'll try and do my best to, to recap all of it, yes? <sighs> all right, guys, so let's get into this. And let's see what messages we have for the collective in terms of this full moon energy. Now, um, in it, depending on your system, okay, you're either, you're either tropical astrology, which has this full moon in Aquarius, or you're in sidereal astrology, and that would have the, the full moon in Capricorn. Now, there is one site that, or one um, YouTube channel 
that I recommend for sidereal astrology, and that's Mastering the Zodiac. However, I, I, I'm in his, I'm part of his mail, mailing list, and I haven't watched his video on the full moon yet, but he's saying it's in between Sagittarius and Capricorn, which is an interesting concept. I've never really thought, I never really thought it would, it could be that way, but obviously it could, anything's possible. So I say all that to say, um, depending on whatever form of astrology you follow, it's in a different sign, all right? And I, if I'm, if I'm going to be talking about astrology, I tend to talk about astrology from the sidereal point of view. However, I've recently fallen or slipped or come into this mindset where it's like, I don't, I, excuse my language, like I, like, like I really have to say that, but I don't fucking care. I don't care <laughs> where the moon is. I don't care what sign it's in. Like, and maybe, and this, this may not be, um, you know, this may not stick. I may get back into it at some point in life, but like uh, for the last, and I guess this is a little bit of a sidebar, whatever. There are timestamps in the description box below, but um, over the last three years, I've been going back and forth trying to figure out the last three years that I've had this channel. I've been trying to go back and forth, trying to figure out which form of astrology is best to work with. And it's a constant struggle. It's a constant battle. And at this point, I just, I straight up just don't care any longer. <laughs> I, I, I just, I don't care. And maybe I don't care because that's really not my focus. My focus is just channeling the energies for you and interpreting them. I don't give a shit. I don't give a damn where the planets are. I re like, and, and maybe, again, maybe this is just a form of frustration. But at this point right now, that's not important to me. Okay, that really is not important to me. Um, what's more important for me as a reader for my work here as a guide, as what not, what, whatever you want to call me, a guru, a teacher, whatever you want to call me, my focus is literally just channeling the energies and giving you an interpretation so that you can have a better understanding of it. So with that said, I don't care what, 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 what form of astrology you practice that's not important here what's more important is let's just talk about the energies okay so this this full moon is either in aquarius or it's in capricorn or it's split between capricorn and sagittarius like who the fuck cares <laughs> and if you want to if you want to get into the astrology of it i recommend mastering the zodiac he's great for sidereal astrology there are a ton of tropical astrologers out there betsy of fearless intuition is a great one uh the leo king is really popular i mean there are uh, there are a plethora Okay, there is no shortage of astrologers out there. So you will be able to find the information that resonates for you, that, that works for you. It's out there, all right? Don't worry about that. But here on this channel, at least at this moment in time, we're not focused on that. We're just going to be channeling the energies and discussing them to help you get a better understanding. Okay? Cool. Now my nose is acting up. <laughs> All right, we're going to get into this and let's just see what messages we have for the collective. Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved Please give us clear and accurate representations of the energies in terms of this latest full moon we have on July 23rd. And please give us the best understanding that you can and the best clarity that you can in terms of what this full moon is bringing forward for the collective and how we can heal, grow, and expand through these energies. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All righty, kids. We're going to start with the Moonology deck. Yeah, um, I'm going to give this five shuffles, and we're going to see what general themes we have for the collective. Yes? Here we go. Full moon, July 23rd. What's the deal, Spirit? Five shuffles. One. This is two. 
Now, I'm not saying that, you know what? Forget it. I said what I said. This is three. Full moon in either Aquarius or Capricorn or split between Capricorn and Sagittarius. Who the fuck cares? This is four. <laughs> <clears throat> and this is five. All right, y'all. So what messages do we have for the collective today for this full moon cycle? What's going on in this full moon cycle? Now, there's one thing that I do want to mention from last night so far. It's that um, a lot of people have been feeling a lot of heavy energy lately, and that makes perfect sense. One of the things that came out last night was what do you need to release? And there's definitely a lot of release that's happening in the collective right now, okay? And for many of us, um, this is like a last ditch effort or this is a final round of cleansing, clearing, and healing before we cross into or before we cross the Lion's Gate portal of which I'm going to be doing a pick a card reading for. That should be out this weekend. I'm looking to record that over the next two days, maybe even just today if I can get it done today. Um, but there's still a lot of heavy energy. There's a lot of release happening, but this is preparing us for the Lion's Gate portal. Okay. Um, okay. The, this is preparing us for the Lion's Gate portal. And what's going on with that is it's like, it's uh, from what I'm, from what I'm channeling here, from what I've come to understand about this one specifically, I mean, it happens every year, but for this one specifically, this is going to be a major shot forward for a lot of people in the collective. And so because of that, we're using this la this full moon, right? This is the last full moon before that portal. I don't even think there's a new moon before the portal or maybe right around the time of the portal or something like that. But in terms of this full moon energy, this is a really great time to release and to let go. And it's perfect because the, um, I'm just, yeah, I'm, it's perfect because, uh, it's perfect because um, the moon is full. And so at this time, this is a really great time for you to use the energies of the moon because they're at their strongest. So you can use that to manifest. You can use that to set intentions. You can use that to, uh, to break through and to, um, to heal, to release, to let go, okay? Also, um, interesting tidbit, I think, I think, and we did briefly touch on this last night, but I think in, um, in tropical astrology, uh, I mean, Chiron, Chiron is in retrograde. Now, depending on what system you, you follow, it's either in Aries or something else. I don't know. I, haven't, I really have not looked into it. I have no desire to do so right now. Um, but with Chiron being, um, being in retrograde, right, in, Western, in the Western system, Chiron is, is, uh, is considered the wounded healer. Um, there is a lot of potential healing that can come from that. With any sort of retrograde energy, healing can come from it because it allows you to take some time or allows you to use the energies to backtrack a little bit and go back and fix or heal or work on some things that need to be, that were not previously done correctly or that need healing, this, that, and the third. And with Chiron being the wounded healer, a lot of good, a lot of strong healing is coming through. But that is translating into energies of feeling fatigue feeling, um, I don't want to take that, feeling fatigue, feeling heaviness, um, just feeling a lot of strong emotions, a lot of sadness and whatnot, whatever. But this is all part of the purging process. This is all part of the healing process. Okay. So in terms of this full moon, what official messages do we have for the collective please, spirit? All right, so first message out here is look at the bigger picture, okay? Full moon in Sagittarius, which is funny because in sidereal astrology, um, from what I saw just briefly, five minutes just from reading a, a newsletter, 
uh, is it's either it's straddled between Sagittarius and Capricorn. All right. So look at the bigger picture here. That is a massive focus. Okay. One of the big things that I've been experiencing lately throughout all these energies has been an element of a deeper healing, but deeper healing that comes from a deeper understanding of certain energies or certain situations. And for me specifically, that has translated into taking the personal aspect out of the situation, literally taking me out of the situation and recognizing how people act or how people associate or how people interact with each other just from a plain, straight up, like bird's eye point of view. And that's what's helped me to not take things so personally any longer, which is also helping me to heal and let go from resentment, okay? So you have to let, look at the bigger picture here. I, I know it sounds cliche, but it's really not about you, okay? Any sort of, any way or actions that, any way somebody may have acted towards you, any way someone may have treated you, any sort of negative circumstances or negative situations, whatnot, whatever, that you're healing from, that you're purging and whatnot, whatever. I know it sounds cliche, but you have to work on not taking it personally. And I didn't quite understand that at first either until I understood that it has... At someone else's response towards you or someone the way someone acts towards you literally has nothing to do with you, okay? It may come down to, you know, they are um, treating you a, a, a certain type of way because of the color of your skin, because of your sexual orientation, because of your gender, because of your job, because of your social standing, because of your, your, your level of intelligence, because of your level of, uh, of education, like it, anything. Okay. But it's, and that might seem personal because they are taking literal elements of your life and seemingly using it against you but it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with that individual and their perspective. It also has to do with what that individual wants in their life and how they choose to go about getting it, okay? It literally has nothing to do with you. And that is something that I really, I came to understand recently as I've been going through a lot of inner child healing, okay? Um, but this time it's different because I was able to look at the bigger picture. I was able to, to zoom out and, and put together, put together all of the pieces of the puzzle that helped me understand where these people, like certain members of my immediate family or just society as a whole, where these people were coming from psychologically, emotionally, just in terms of life experience. And that helped me to finally see that it really had nothing to do with me. Any of the situations that I dealt with that were really toxic, that were really degrading, that really beat me down, that made me feel worse about myself, made me feel like a terrible person, whatnot, whatever. It literally had nothing to do with me. It was all coming from their conditioning, their experience. And again, what they wanted in life and how they were willing to go about getting it. Okay. So passing judgment on somebody because they don't fit into a certain mold or, or a certain, a certain class or something like that. Um, um, ridicule and, and, and being put down and anything like that because you don't line up because you're not part of this, that, whatever. Again, it doesn't have anything to do with you. <clears throat> you have to look at the bigger picture here. So in your healing process during, during this full moon, uh, this is really kind of perfect because you can look at it this way in terms of, uh, uh philosophically, right? Because Sagittarius is a very philosophical energy. It's a, it's an energy of um, the ninth house. Sagittarius is a ruler of the ninth house. And so the ninth house is all about higher learning and expansion, travel, um, travel to, oh, to different countries, overseas, learning new languages. But with that comes different perspective, okay? Higher perspective. So as you're going through your healing process in this time period, really try your hardest to step out of the, of the emotions and to zoom out 
and look at the bigger picture. Look at the circumstances from which somebody comes from, the environment that they come from, the mindset that they're in, what their life goals are, okay? What their relation to society is, all of that energy, okay? Um, and then, and I'm not saying, now this does not mean give somebody, uh, uh, overdo it with giving people the benefit of the doubt, or this is definitely not to excuse anyone for their negative or low vibrational behavior. But if you can look at it from a psychological point of view or from a higher point of view, from a higher focus, from a bird's eye view, from the aspect of the bigger picture, that will help you compartmentalize things. That will help you see through the shit. That will help you see through the illusions, okay, or whatever. And that will help you put that into greater perspective so that for you, you can get the, the understanding that you need and move forward with that lesson in your life. Yes? Okay. Moving forward. What else? I want to get two more cards. So what else do you have for us, please, Spirit, in terms of this full moon on the 23rd, whether it be in Aquarius or whether it be in Capricorn, straddling Capricorn or Sagittarius? What messages do you have for us, please, Spirit, in terms of this full moon? Uh-huh. Okay. One more card, please, Spirit. One more card. Okay. We have two more cards here. And one of them, <clears throat> one of them happens to be the same card, one of the same cards that came out last night. So I'm glad it came out here. Um, and there's a story that I can tell you guys that I was that I ended up telling last night in last night's session. So this is good. You have the next card here is time to breathe out. You also have you and your loved ones are safe. Okay, this is a time for you to let go. Time to breathe out. Okay, but in order for you to be like, okay, so we totally just had that a few days ago. What was it? The last morning coffee session that we did that we had, which was on Tuesday of this week. Uh, the, the, the title of the reading was fuck this guy, right? Well, um, I made a reference to a certain movie that I was incorrect about. I said it was how Stella got her groove back, but it wasn't. It was waiting to exhale. Okay. Uh, with Whitney Houston and, um, Angela Bassett and a number of other really talented, fantastic actresses. Uh, and it's so funny because before I did that reading, and I mentioned this in the community post that in which I corrected myself about the title of the movie, but um, I have been having that song, Shoop, from that movie, the, that, the song that Whitney Houston did, um, running through my head before I even got to that reading. And I thought it was because, like I said in the post, I thought it was because I had watched a Whitney Houston documentary. But now that I think about it, that song and that movie were barely even referenced, and yet that stuck with me, right? Well, turns out people within the collective are going through that energy right now, okay? So even though the energies might be really heavy for you, even though, you know, this might be a pretty strong emotionally purging time, emotionally purge e time, this is absolutely a time for release, okay? Allowing yourself to look at the bigger picture is going to give you that time or that space to finally breathe out. You don't have to hold your breath any longer. You don't have to fight over this any longer. You don't have to tangle with this any longer. You don't want to have, you don't have to roll around in the muck about this any longer. Okay. Let yourself off the hook. Allow yourself to breathe. Allow yourself to release. Okay. Whatever it is you're facing, letting go of, ultimately you and your loved ones are safe. All right. I understand that for some of you, for some of you, you're facing leaving certain family members behind or leaving certain friendships, associations behind, um, uh, allegiances. You, this is all in service of ascension. Okay. And one of the biggest things about this ascension process, you guys, is recognizing and understanding that you have no power to control or change or really influence directly someone else's ascension process. Okay. You can be a light bearer. 
You can stand in your in your truth, in your light, in your power. You can be going through your own process of ascension and allow that light to shine for others to see. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to influence them to do it at the same time that you're doing it. Again, you have no power over someone else's ascension process. Some of you are holding on very dearly to certain individuals or certain associations because you find yourself climbing the ascension ladder and they're staying right where they are in some sort of fear-based reality. I did hear that very specifically just now, in some sort of fear-based reality. Not to sound nonchalant or flippant, but that's their problem. And I mean, and I don't, again, I don't mean to sound condescending, flippant, nonchalant, none of that, okay? I actually do care about people and about their ascension process, but I can't do anything about it. If you're gonna walk your ascension process, you gotta choose to do that. So those of you that are on your ascension process, you are choosing to sit here and listen to videos such as this one. You are choosing to do the research that you need to do to get the understanding, the greater understanding that you need to. You are choosing to do the energetic work, the emotional healing, the emotional work, the, 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 the healing work to do, to go through your process of ascension. Ascension. You are choosing to step out of a fear-based reality and step into that of love. You can't force someone else to come with you. And quite frankly, some people aren't even meant to go through that this time. Just because we may be going through it now and we may be choosing to take advantage of this opportunity now that we have in front of us right here, right now, does not mean that someone else has to choose to do so and doesn't mean that they won't get another chance in the future. It's not like this is never going to happen again. I mean, yes, this is a very unique time in human history, okay? But it's not like they're not going to get a chance to do it in the future. This is a constant thing ongoing. You can't take them with you. They have to choose to willingly come themselves. You and your loved ones are safe, okay? But take the time to breathe out. Last card I wanna talk about that's come out here is luck is on your side. And this was the story that I told last night. Um, at the bottom of the deck, you do have a personal issue reaches solution, okay? I want to make sure that you see that full moon in Cancer. That is also connected to this whole you, you and your loved one's energy is safe. But look at the bigger picture and take some time to breathe out because it's time to exhale, okay? You don't have to hold your breath any longer. Now, last card that I want to talk about before we move into the to clarification with Tarot. Luck is, in fact, on your side. And this is a story that I definitely want to tell again. And I'm glad this card came out because this was a pretty big thing. So I told a story yesterday about, or last night, about how um, the universe ha is, is, is really testing me or was kind of testing me pretty, pretty strongly um, with this whole new cycle that I'm stepping into, right? This deeper sense of healing that I'm going through, which manifested as me quitting smoking cigarettes and uh, again <laughs> and but this time it's much deeper because i i've been ready and of a mindset to focus on the deeper elements of what's really been hurting me and that's where i came to a realization that nicotine or my abuse of nicotine um and tobacco was not anything chemical it had everything or has everything to do with the pain in my heart and the damage in my heart, my heart chakra, that I was hiding from. I was pushing away. I was choosing not to deal with. I was numbing the pain by smoking cigarettes, right? And in the past, I never really understood that. I never saw it that way. I could always quit and not go back because it was never about the chemicals. It was always about the triggers and the, the uh, coping mechanism that smoking cigarettes was for me, right? And so now, this time around, I was able to get deeper to deeper there. And that's where I started to realize that all of the things that I was harboring, all the resentment that I had towards certain situations in my life that I experienced up until now, that's where I got to the deeper understanding of it really was not even about me. It was about these other people, their alignment and what it is they wanted in their lives and how they were willing to go about getting it, right? Okay. So with all of that said, 
there is a new process and a new form of discipline that I'm putting into my life right now. Trust me, I am not becoming some sort of hard ass, like military and it's like, no, no, it's, it's not even that serious. Like just the fact that I'm using the word discipline towards myself is novel for me, okay? And if you know me, you get it, but, but okay. So anyway, um, so I've been putting a, a, a better or a more strict, stricter practice than in the past, right? Into my life. So that includes things like not smoking cigarettes, not drinking excessively like I used to, right? I mean, you, I, I explained this to you guys already, like for the last four years have been ever since I left my ex-husband, I went through the whole twin flame thing, this, that, and third, like I've been drinking excessively for the last four years. Let's cut that down significantly, but also, not partying, not going out and hanging out with people during the week and not doing things uh, that ultimately drain me of my energy and then I can't come and perform for my line of work here, right? So I've been putting a lot of boundaries up and really saying no a lot, saying no, I can't do that, no, I can't do that, no, I can't do that, maybe we can hang out over the weekend, this, that, and the third and all that, right? Really adulting, really, okay. But then Tuesday came around. And um, it was Monday night. Uh, one of my friends had um, sent me a message asking what I was doing during the week. And she wanted me to meet a friend of hers, or actually a, a friend of hers, yes, but also a colleague, a coworker of hers. And she wanted me to connect with this person. Now, it made sense because the week prior with this same friend, the universe had facilitated a situation in which, if you guys remember, I lost power last week. Uh, during the week and I ended up having to go to this friend's house early in the morning on Thursday so that I could get work done, right? She had power. She had Wi-Fi. I, she, she tells me all the time, you can use my space. It's all, it's totally cool. And that's right now, that's the best space for me to use, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. But and, anyway, I ended up going to her house that day to work. And that's where I met this large group of friends of hers that she had been telling us were coming to visit and I had wanted to meet them anyway, but I lost track. We had kind of gone separate ways for a while just because we were working and life got in the way, but I ended up serendipitously, serendipitously, I ended up at her house one of the days that they were all there and I got to meet them. And I ended up doing readings for them before they had their beach day and before I had my day of work. It was a really awesome situation. And there were a number of other situations that came about because of the fact that I had lost power that day and ended up at her house that day and was doing work and met all of those people, right? Like down to the point where I ended up going to a restaurant for dinner that weekend that I had been dying to go to for the longest time but kept forgetting about. And the only reason I went to that restaurant that weekend was because I was talking to her and her friends, seeing what they were doing for dinner. She was like, well, we have reservation at this place. And I was like, oh my God, I've been wanting to go to that place forever and ended up having friend dinner there with some other friends too. It never would have happened had the universe not facilitated that situation by me losing power. Now, I, I could have lost power for any other reasons. We talked about that in that last live stream last week, right? Okay, so that was already one thing. So now this following week, this same friend, that whole group of friends of hers has already gone back to California. But now she wants me to meet someone else. Um, and I kind of figured, okay, she wants me to do a reading for this person, even though she didn't really say it, but like whatever. And so, but I was saying to her, I was like, look, I don't know if I'm really gonna be available this week. Um, maybe we can meet up over the weekend. I'm gonna be out in town actually at an event on Saturday. You guys should come through there. And she was like, well, you know, I was thinking maybe we could do something a little more intimate. It doesn't have to be a, a long thing. You know, just me and you and this friend of mine at my place for like an hour or two after work. And then I was kind of catching the vibe of like, okay, maybe we can make a dinner thing out of this. And then she even suggested I can make tacos. Perfect. Okay. That I'm down with. Like if it's just me, you, and one other person, like not getting crazy, maybe we can have a few beers, but we can hang out. We can make dinner and everybody can be ready to go like by eight o'clock at night so that we can get home and be adults and be up in the morning for work. Right. Cute. 
So we decided on that. But then the next day, Tuesday, the day that we were supposed to do this. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is all about how luck is on your side, right? The next day, Tuesday came around and all day I was in this really annoyed energy and I didn't know why. Finally, I get a message from this friend of mine and she's all like, hey, so um, now we're going to be having dinner with this other friend of ours who is her neighbor downstairs. She was talking to me. I told her that you were coming. She's having a dinner party. She's invited us to dinner this, that, and the third. And now it's becoming a big thing. And I'm getting annoyed now because I'm like, whoa, wait a second. Like I'm kind of feeling like I'm baited and switched here. I specifically told you I'm not really all that available this week. Now, granted, I didn't give you all the details about how I'm not really trying to hang out like that or why, so I'll tell you now. But I really was not expecting this to become a big thing. I thought it was just gonna be the three of us. We were gonna have tacos, this, that, and the third, and then that would be it because I'm not trying to be out late at night during the week so that I can work, so I can stay in alignment, this, that, and the third. And she was like, whoa, like, totally, I understand. I'm right there with you. Like, I have to be up early for the work, for work in the morning too. Like, I'm not trying to party like that either. So she and I kind of settled on that. We were okay, all right? I end up going to their place. I had met this person. It was awesome. I absolutely needed to meet this person. We connected on some serious levels. I did do a reading for that person. She ended up, this friend of hers ended up paying me, but she paid me all in $2 bills, seven of them. Seven $2 bills. Now, like how often does something like that happen, okay? So this is a lesson here in terms of going with the flow, allowing the universe to guide you, okay? Now, I did my part in terms of holding my boundaries, speaking my truth, and not just giving in and saying, well, I'll just go with anything. No, I spoke my truth, but I ended up going along with it and it ended up turning out to be much better than I could have imagined. And the universe paying me in seven $2 bills was a sign. It was that two, two, two energy that we've been discussing. Allow yourself to go with the flow. Don't be too rigid. If you're going to manifest with the universe, you have to allow yourself to be flexible. Now, granted, I did end up staying there much later than I had expected, but that's because I was waiting to eat. Our friend was making us dinner. She invited us to dinner. I mean, I was very gracious enough to accept. I was like, I was very appreciative of it. And I ended up having a really great night. It wasn't too crazy. Okay, I did end up, I didn't leave there until 9.30 at night, which was much later than I had wanted to, intended to, but it wasn't that big of a thing because the next day I really didn't have much to do. So it's not like I had to get up early in the morning like I was thinking, right? It all worked out in the end. Stand your ground, hold your boundaries, but allow the universe to direct you. Allow the universe to, to, to help you, to guide you here. You have to remain flexible. Luck is in fact on your side. Had I, not, had I been rigid and not allowed myself to go with the flow, I would have completely missed something really freaking awesome, okay? That was a long-winded story, but th that, that's, what, that's, what, that's the story that I told yesterday, so I wanted to retell it. Luck is, in fact, on your side, but you have to allow the universe to work with you, through you, and for you, okay? Hold your boundaries, all right? But see, I knew, I knew I needed to meet this person. Even when my friend came to me saying, I really want you to meet this person, immediately I was like, okay, the universe is coming through saying, we want you to make this connection. So ultimately, I was going to go with it anyway, but I didn't have to be as rigid as I need, as I thought, right? Beautiful. Allow yourselves to go with the flow, kids. Okay, let's move forward here. Um, I want to get some clarity. What we are going to break down, we're going to break down, look at the bigger picture. You and your loved ones are safe. And then we're going to look at luck is at, on your side. All right. Excellent. Uh, we're using the after two row here. Let's look at, uh, look at the bigger picture first. Yes. Five shuffles here. One. Two. Three.
four. And five. <laughs> Alrighty, kids. So, look at the bigger picture. What's the deal here? What's the deal with this, please, Spirit? Clarity and guidance can you give us in terms of look at the bigger picture? Mm hmm. Okay. You have temperance. Yeah. So this is all about balance, staying patient, staying balanced, staying grounded, okay? You have the Page of Pentacles. So what this is saying to me is that we are embarking on a brand new level, okay? The Page of Pentacles often represents a level up for me as a reader, all right? So we're literally about to step into a new reality, and that's exactly what I was picking up on, what I've been picking up on in terms of the, uh, <clears throat> of the Lionsgate portal that I feel this last full moon here is really helping us to get into alignment with okay but in order for us to step into this next reality in order for us to actually experience this level up there are things that we are going to need to let go of that we're going to need to heal we have this with the ace of cups okay <clears throat> so not only is this about unconditional love for yourself but this is unconditional love and understanding for others. And the understanding that everybody has their own path to walk. Everybody is going through their own journey. Everybody is going through their own experiences. But you don't have to take that personally. You don't have to demonize. We don't have to demonize each other. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how the person is acting. I don't care how the, what the person is doing to you or to others. That's between them, them and themselves and God's source creator. And I understand it had, may have had an effect on you, but if you look at the bigger picture here, you would understand eventually at some point, you would understand that there were lessons in that for you. And there were also lessons in that for everyone else that was affected by it as also that person. Okay. Or the perpetrator here, we could say, but it is not your responsibility to make sure that they learn that lesson just for your own sake, just so that you can get revenge or that you can feel better or this, that, or, that, or you can have some sort of sense of closure. Nope, 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 nope. It does not work that way. Okay. So in order for you to let go, in order for you to move forward here, you have to look at the bigger picture, but you also have to allow love to come into the situation. You have to allow yourself to, to, to really grasp the lessons, the real meaning of the situation before you step into this next level. Okay. Temperance. Yeah. I want to look a little bit deeper. I want to look a little bit deeper at this page of pentacles here. What else can you say about this page of pentacles energy? Please, spirit. What else can you say about this page of pentacle energy? Okay. Anything else? No, they're saying that's it. Okay, don't care. Uh, Queen of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. Okay, uh, but you have judgment here that's come out in reverse. So it seems that we're already standing in this new energy for a lot of us. Judgment in reverse here is um, there's no going back or no second chances, thing like things like that. Okay, but what this is really also kind of feeling like for the collective here is for those of you that are resonating with this reading or this at least this part of the message, you've actually already stepped into this into this new reality on an energetic level. And so because of that, because of that, there is a lot of purging and releasing and cleansing and healing that is happening so that you can continue to move forward. It's as if you've, you've answered the call, you've stepped into this next level, you've risen above, right? And now because of that, now that you're standing in this new vibration or this new vibrational energy, all that does not fit, all that is not a vibrational match is being released. And... The, the message here or the, uh, the intention or what it is Spirit wants you to understand is um, in order for you to move forward, you have to release this, but it's going to be easier for you to release when you take the personal aspect out of it and you really look at the bigger picture here. And that comes from an unconditionally loving point of view. Now, with the Queen of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck here, this is also an understanding of what I was saying before. You can't force or take somebody with you. 
okay? You can't force somebody to level up. You can't force somebody to be ready for something that they're not. And the Queen of Pentacles, I mean, like, there's no love lost there. It's not like she's she's writing you off or she's she's completely, you know, excommunicating you from her circle or whatnot, whatever. But she's also not going to give to her give up her resources to a situation that is not going to be reciprocal or to a situation that's not deserving of it in some cases or a situation that is is not ready for it or is not capable of following through with what it is she's working towards. And again, there's no animosity there. It's literally just not a vibrational match. And so she's not going to give time, attention, or energy to it. Straight up and down. Point blank. Like it's really that easy. Or that simple. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's move forward. Uh, you and your loved ones are safe. Let's get some clarity on that, please, spirit. You and your loved ones are safe. What do you want to talk about? What do you want to say about that, please, spirit? Six of Swords. With another card that's falling face down. Okay, we'll leave it there. We have the Four of Cups at the bottom of the deck. All right, so um, there are certain individuals, certain family members, certain friends, uh, associations in your life that are... Um, <laughs> still wrapped up in the game or what I'm also hearing, what I heard very specifically was still wrapped up in the glory days. But the glory days that Spirit is referring to are the glory days of like capitalism and um, like the American dream and and all of all of that shit that we're starting to realize is not actually really what we what we thought it was. Right. Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups is in reverse. Okay, you have the Six of Swords here, and then you have the Four of Cups to the Seven of Pentacles, okay, uh, to the Six of Cups, ooh, yes, to the Devil and the Five of Swords. <clears throat> All right, so this is actually translating into your energy in terms of where you are in life right now that's causing you to want to move forward, to want to leave the rough waters behind, to want to go through this ascension process and get to higher dimensional realities of existence. But it's representing your energy because actually it's representing both. It's representing your energy because it's representing where you are at this moment in time. But it's also representing these other people that are you're associated with, your loved ones here, that spirit is assuring you that they are safe. It's representing them because ultimately they will get to this place too when they are ready for it. Okay, what is this place? No longer wanting to be associated with this type of situation or this type of energy. Four of Cups, literally pouring that cup out saying, I don't want this. Why? Because you've learned. You've been going through the situation over and over and over and over and over again, doing it the same way, expecting it to change, expecting things to get better, expecting it to get a better or a different result. And now you're coming to the realization, this is in terms of the past, as you deal with the past, as you heal, as you go through this mental process of sifting through everything and seeing this all from a higher point of view, that's when you get to the point of you're like, oh, no, I don't want to do this any, any longer. Seven of Pentacles. You gain that nugget of Pentacle of wisdom and you move forward with it, effectively releasing yourself from the toxicity and the devil energy, the low vibrational, the codependency, the attachment, this, that, and the third. You finally put down the sword. Because in this type of energy, in this situation, nobody wins here. Okay, this is literally devilish energy or energetic vampires or negative circumstances that sure, there may be some people on top that seem to be benefiting from this situation. But once a, fish, a sufficient amount of people start to wake up and recognize how they're being manipulated and used and their energies are being sucked away and they choose not to. They choose not to give in to this situation. They choose not to fight this battle any longer. They literally put their swords down and saying, I choose something different. I'm not, 
I'm not feeding into your parasitic situation any longer. Then those people that are seemingly on top that seem to benefit everything come crashing down to the ground because they no longer have their support system of all the people that they've been manipulating and, and sucking energy dry from. They don't have that foundation any longer. They don't have those individuals or those people playing that game with them that help to support them or keep them propped up any longer. Eventually, eventually, they, just like you, will lose interest and will no longer want to be uh, sipping from or sampling all these seven cups. They will no longer be trapped or, or um, 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 hypnotized, hypnotized by this illusion, seven of cups, of all these beautiful, potential, amazing things that you could have. And then the, the, the kicker about the seven of cups is that you've got all these seven cups in front of you, but some of them have some pretty toxic shit in there. And more times than not, people get caught up in this energy and end up drinking from that toxic cup. And now they're worse off than they began, right? Eventually, they, just like you, will lose interest. And when they're ready for that, the universe will be right there for them saying, excellent, let's get going. Okay? You and your loved ones are safe. Last thing I want to look at is luck is on your side. Yes? All right. So what would you like to say for us, Spirit, in terms of luck being on our side? And this is exactly what I was saying last night. Luck is on your side because of the work that you've been doing and the balance that you have been able to strike. Two of Pentacles. You have two of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck, but you have that with the Four of Wands and the Eight of Pentacles. Okay. And this is very much the definition of what luck truly is, or at least this is how I've come to understand what luck really is. Luck is what you make of it, okay? I really, I mean, I, I don't, in, in some cases, there really, I, I feel like there really is no such thing as luck because what seems to be lucky is really just a person being prepared and ready to step forward, ready to undertake whatever it is they're going through because they've worked at it, because they worked for it, because they prepared for it. Your sense of stability within yourself, your four of wands energy, your union energy within you came because you have been working diligently towards it, eight of pentacles. And that is why luck is on your side. That is why you don't have to worry about the situation. That is why no matter where the universe is asking you to be, to show up, what the universe is asking you to do, it doesn't matter. It is in alignment with you. You can trust the universe. Luck is, in fact, on your side. And that's mainly because of the sovereignty that you have gained in terms of releasing yourself from some sort of toxic, devilish energy. Make sense? I hope so. Okay, you guys. Um, I want to close out the reading. I want to get Oracle Guidance, but I'm actually being pulled to get Oracle Guidance from two separate decks here. The first deck that I want to get Oracle Guidance from is the Sacred Activations Oracle, okay? I'm sorry, the Sacred Geometry Activations Oracle, right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give this three shuffles here. One. Two, and three. Alrighty, kids. So, what closing oracle guidance do we have? Please, spirit. Closing. Ooh, this is nice. Card number 36, prosperity. The frequency of prosperity supports our feeling of well-being by allowing the inclusion of everything that makes our body, mind, heart, soul, and spirit sing. It invites us to express ourselves in joy and celebration of the abundance and riches that the universe provides. 
So we're definitely moving into a much more prosperous time period or, or, or energy or element for ourselves right now. Okay. Um, and that all comes from the work that we're doing on ourselves that allows us to heal. And then that healing directly translates into a, a level of being able to have faith in the universe, more faith, more trust, more belief in the universe than we have been able to have before when we were in a very wounded state. The more healing that we do, the more we can trust the universe, the more prosperity we can actually have in our lives. And that prosperity translates more into more than just money and power. It's emotional prosperity. It's mental prosperity. It's prosperity for our whole community, right? Communities. Yes. Excellent. Last message that I want to get for the collective is from the Lightworker Oracle. All righty. Five shuffles with this one. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Alrighty, kids. Closing Oracle Guidance for today's session for this new, for this full moon, excuse me, for this full moon reading. Card number 39, Divine Talents. You are a talented soul. Over many lifetimes, you have developed your spiritual abilities to channel higher awareness, attracting healing energy, and radiate light to uplift the consciousness of those around you. Your divine talents, talents are many and uniquely expressed through you. Your talents do not have to resemble those of another to have their own inestimable, inestimable value. Do not be afraid to use them. This oracle comes to you with a message. You have spiritual talents some of which have been developed in other lifetimes and will simply and suddenly, quote, spring back to life as if from out of the blue this lifetime. Others need a little more attention, patience, and effort to be brought into the life, brought to life in the world. This is particularly the case for you at this time, if you have also drawn another card, but we did not draw that here. This oracle also reminds you to do what makes you happy, to chase your sacred bliss, and express yourself in the world via the unique and special abilities that the divine has bestowed upon you. When you follow what you love, you are on your life path and you shall succeed, beloved. Yes? Beautiful. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>